Is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on and praise in this morning. God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is, God, my savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, oh, yes, he is, every prayer. Is to our God every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Yes, it is. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, give him all your praise this morning. He's your savior. God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, my deliverer, yes, he is, oh, yes, he is, God, my Savior, God, my healer, God, he's my deliverer, yes, he is, oh, yes, Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Lord, we praise you. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Oh, sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise. Every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. Go on and give him a good praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Every time, this next song that I want us to sing, it's an old hymn. Most of you know it. It's called Everybody Will Be Happy Over There. But every time I think about singing it, I thought, goodness gracious, here in this life, you can't hardly ever get anybody to be happy. Everybody's always got something to gripe about. But thank God, everybody will be happy over there. Praise God. And I believe if we get in tune with God, we can even be happy here. Say amen. Oh, hallelujah. Well, everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. Shout and sing God's praise. Everybody will be happy over there. There's a happy land of promise over in the great beyond where the saved of earth shall soon the glory share. Where the souls of men shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy, will be happy over there. Oh, we will shout and sing God's praise. 
Everybody will be happy over there Well, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers Will be singing around the throne In that land where no one ever knows a care And the Christians of all ages Will join in that triumph song Everybody will be happy over there Come on, help me now Well, everybody will be happy We'll be happy over there We will shout and sing God's praise Everybody will be happy over there There we'll meet the one who saved us And who kept us by his grace And who brought us to that land so bright and fair Oh, we will praise his name forever As we look upon his face Everybody will be happy over there Hallelujah! Well, everybody will be happy We'll be happy over there We'll shout and sing God's praise Everybody will be happy over there Sing it again Oh, now everybody will be happy We'll be happy over there We will shout and sing God's praise Everybody will be happy over there Yes, everybody will be happy over there. Oh, go on and give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we worship you today. He's worthy of all praise and honor and glory and to be magnified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. My God, when I in all some wonder consider all the works thine hands have made, I see. The stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe display. I know you know it, help me sing it. Then sings my soul. Lord, we worship you this morning. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. I will, Lord, before your throne, and there proclaim, I'll proclaim, oh my God, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great 
Oh, 
Somebody lift your hand and say, Lord, send that sweet, precious anointing. Stretch your hand this way, if you will. Father, I ask, Lord, for that precious anointing that we've just been singing about and talking about, Lord Jesus. God, I ask you this morning to guide my thoughts and my speech, the words of my mouth. Lord, let me speak not what I want to say, but God, let it come from heaven. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. There's a term that we hear used in the church quite often and sometimes even in the world. And it's something that quite often we only mention briefly, but it's of such great importance. Sister Marguerite, I want you just to, this morning to hold that organ. You sound so beautiful and you sound so good, but I want this to sink in deep this morning. There, this phrase that I'm talking about is something that's so important and it's exactly what I was just singing about. The phrase is the anointing. And we hear a lot said in church about the anointing. As I've mentioned, a lot of times we'll hear people of the world speaking of the anointing and it's something that we all need and it's something that without which, without the anointing of God all preaching would be useless. Without the anointing of the Holy Ghost, all teaching would be nothing. Without the anointing, singing would be dead. Leadership would be misguided. Kings would be without authority, without the anointing upon them. And churches would be dead and lifeless without the anointing of God upon them. Now, we refer to the, the anointing and it's something that we do quite often in the natural, but when we do it in the natural, it's an outward sign of something that God is doing in the spiritual. Now, we in the Pentecostal realm, and, and again, I've told you folks, you know it quite well that I've been raised Pentecost all my life. We did a lot of anointing, a lot of uh, praying for the sick and anointing with oil, and it's scriptural as I'll share with you in just a moment. But what, we, what are we doing when we take that oil and we put it on somebody, whether we dab it on or, or in years gone by, we, had, we have had ordination services. Some of you have been in some of those ordination services where we would have a line of ministers come through and we would anoint each one with oil and back when J.O. Townley was alive, he had a great big old long horn. Hey, sister, uh, you know just exactly what I'm talking about. Lowell and Karen, they, they've been there. They've witnessed Lita, Sharon, some of you folks have seen. He would take a, uh, that old cow horn about that long, fill it full of oil, and as people would come through that ordination line on, on the night of convention, he wouldn't dab them on the forehead. He would tip that horn up and pour it out on them, and when they went out the other end, boy, they went out greasy, I'm telling you. Praise God. And I say, do it again, Lord, do it again. Hallelujah. Now, you know, we've kind of, we've got away from it. We've, uh, last year, I'm not even sure that we had an anointing service and the year before that, I think we, we did it a little bit, but we didn't really get into it like we used to. And I'm going to try this year if I can. We may have to spread some carpet down here to keep from getting the floors oily, but I want us this year in the convention, if we can, to have another outpouring oil service, hallelujah, as an outward sign of what we need God to do in the spiritual. Pour out the oil, Lord. Pour out the spirit, God, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And when we're doing that, it's just a natural sign of something that's taking place in the supernatural realm. Hallelujah. And even though we can't maybe explain what the anointing is exactly, 
And I'll never forget what Don, Brother Don Warren said, and I, I probably didn't give Sharon the introduction that I should have because I assume everybody knows who Sharon is, Brother Don Warren's daughter. But if you didn't know that, that's Brother Don's daughter there. And Brother Don, I traveled with him and Brother Hall for five years, and, and Brother Hall used to say that Don said something about the anointing. He would say, Brother Hall, I can't explain it. I don't know what the anointing is, how to explain what it is, but I sure know what it ain't. Meaning, I know when it's there and I know when it's not there. You preachers, if you've ever preached with the anointing and you've ever preached without it, you know exactly where I'm coming from. If you've ever sung under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and if you've ever sung without it, when you sing without it, you just might as well put your ditty bag in the car and go to the house because it's useless and it's lifeless and it's worthless. But when the anointing of the Holy Ghost comes on it, hallelujah, it'll set people free. My sister Judy and I were talking at the first of the service uh, this morning. She said some songs that were sung about a week or two whenever it was ago. And she said, I felt the spirit of God and the anointing of God come on me. And she said, I couldn't help it, but tears started running down my cheeks. That's the anointing. That's when the anointing comes. Hallelujah. It makes everything different. It makes everything alive. It'll heal the sick. Hallelujah. It'll cure the incurable. It'll set the captive free when the anointing comes. And as Brother Don said, I know when, what it ain't. And he, because he had played the organ sometimes when it wasn't there. And it's, it's hard to do. Hard, it's hard to preach. Because you're doing it in yourself. But when the anointing comes, hallelujah, it flows like a river. Praise the Lamb of God. The anointing. The anointing was something that King Saul had to have. The anointing was something that King David had to have. The anointing was something that even Jesus himself had to have. And he had it. As a matter of fact, if you'll read the life of Jesus, watch him. Watch him at the beginning of his ministry. When he first started out, he went to church. He went to the temple. He went to the tabernacle. And what did he say? He quoted the prophet Isaiah. What Isaiah said way back in Isaiah 61, Jesus began to quote those words. And we can find it in the book of Luke chapter 4 where Jesus said, the spirit of of the Lord is upon oh I just saying those words I feel that anointing the spirit of the Lord is upon me because Jesus said because he hath anointed me because he hath anointed me the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted he sent me to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. How could he do that? Because the spirit of the Lord was upon him because the Lord had anointed him. I say anoint us again, God. Hallelujah. With the old timey, red hot, true blue, devil chasing, God loving power of God. Anoint us with it, Lord. Let the anointing flow let the oil flow for the oil is symbolic of the spirit of the holy spirit hallelujah many places in the bible we read where kings and prophets and leaders were anointed with oil even still today the lord moved on me yesterday about this message and here's how it came about I, was, I turned on the television. I got a little old antenna. If it's not storming, I can k pick up channels 3, 9, and 12. And on 3, and on 9, and on 12, yesterday, I don't know if you looked at it, all three channels, they were showing the coronation of the King of England. All eyes were on the King, King Charles, the King of England, and how that he was being crowned as the new king through his coronation ceremony. But in the middle of all that that was taking place and the crowds were thronging around the castle, Buckingham Palace, Westminster Abbey, before, and I even saw a video of them coming in and placing that great, huge, heavy crown upon his head, 
placing it with ever so much care because it's a big, heavy crown that they had to put on his head. But before they did that, they did something else that touched me. They brought in some secrecy, some privacy panels, and they put those panels around the king because something special was getting ready to take place. Something that they had done as part of their history all the way back whenever a king or a queen was, was coronated. There's something they would do before the crown was placed on their head. And that was when the Archbishop of Canterbury would come in at Westminster Abbey and he would take the oil. The, oh, hallelujah. He would take that anointing oil and then it was such a, a sacred thing. It was such a private thing that they had it behind a veil. They didn't want the public in on it. This was between the king and God. Hallelujah. And that archbishop came out and they wouldn't show it on film. That was sacred. That was private. That was holy. That was between the king and God. Hallelujah. And that archbishop anointed him with oil as a sign. Hallelujah. An outward sign that God would be with this king. And they said, God Save the king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we need, what, what did that mean? That means that was his authority. Yeah. That was his seal of approval that was placed upon him. And that's what we need is the hand of God, the anointing of God placed on us, his seal of approval. I'm telling you this morning, ladies and gentlemen, God has sealed his people. Hallelujah. God has anointed his people. Hallelujah. Thank God. It's so urgent and it's so important. It's something we've got to have. Yes, amen. Oh, Jesus. I've got to move along quickly. But just let me touch just a moment. Not having a service tonight, you got time. I can take a, a couple extra minutes because you can, you can relax in your living room after a while. Don't get scared and run out. I'm not going to keep you all day. But if some of the ones in the Bible that were anointed, the prophet Samuel anointed Saul and went, Here's what I like. When Saul was anointed by the prophet Samuel, something happened. We studied about it in Sunday school and in, in Bible study. Something special happened when Saul was anointed. The Bible tells us that he became a different man. Something came over him when the anointing, when that oil was poured out on him. Let me read just a little, if I may, First Samuel. Chapter 10, verse 1 says, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord hath anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? In other words, God has anointed you to be in charge of his people, to rule over his people. But then, but then after he received that anointing, we can look on down at, at 1 Samuel 10 and verse 6. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. And then verse 9 says, And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. Listen to that, folks. God gave him another heart. When? When the anointing came upon him. God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And then if you read down in verse 10, the Spirit of God came on him and he prophesied. He prophesied with the prophets and it became a saying among the people, is Saul also among the prophets? Hallelujah. Why? Because of that anointing that came upon him. Hallelujah. This same prophet Samuel, not only did he anoint Saul, but he also anointed David, who was a man after God's own heart. And there's a very interesting story. Uh, 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 there's a lesson there about when Samuel came to anoint David. Samuel came not knowing, never having seen David before. He had never laid eyes on David, but he knew God had told him 
that there is one in Jesse's household that I've chosen, that I have picked, that is a man after my own heart. And I want you to go there, Samuel. I want you to go there and I want you to anoint him. And so when Samuel got to Jesse's house, Jesse was David's father, most of you know that. When Samuel got to, to Jesse's house, he said, Jesse, bring your boys in here. Bring your sons in because I've got, there's one of them that I've got to anoint. And Jesse brought his sons in. And he looked at one of David's older brothers by the name of Eliab. And when he saw Eliab was a tall, good-looking fellow. And he said, oh, surely, in his, in his mind and in his heart, Samuel said, surely this is the one that God wants to anoint. Because he looked good on the outside. But I'm telling you something this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. Listen to me. God don't anoint you based on looks. God don't anoint you based on the outward appearance. God sees what's on the inside. God sees what's on the heart. Hallelujah. And God knew what was in the heart of David. Hallelujah. And after Jesse had marched all of his sons in there, and he said, well, that's my boys. And Samuel knew something wasn't right. Don't you have another son? Don't you have another son? Well, we've got David, but he's back over there taking care of the flock. Go get him. Go get him and bring him in here. And when they brought David in, he was the one. He was the one, hallelujah, that God wanted to anoint. Are you the one that God wants to anoint? Are you the one that God wants to use? Maybe God doesn't want to use the ones that have the look. Maybe God doesn't want to use those that seem like they're the ones that should be used. God said, I'll raise up, hallelujah, who I want to raise up. Hallelujah, you may be the David that God wants to raise up and use and put his anointing in. Hallelujah. And I like what the Bible said. This is 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. And it came to pass when they were come, talking about Jesse's sons, that he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. <laughs> for the Lord, listen to this, for the Lord seeth not as a man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Let me say that again. The Lord sees not as a man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And then Samuel took that great big horn of oil and he poured it on David and he anointed him. And the Bible said in 1 Samuel 16 and 13, and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. That's what the Bible said. Another interesting fact, let me just interject this in there right quick. Later on, you, you may have read and you may know what I'm getting ready to say, how that Saul, when he kind of disobeyed God and he fell from God's grace and then he sought to kill David, he tried to kill him. He several attempts of throwing a javelin at him and trying to take his life, and David had to flee. And then there were a couple of instances there where David had the advantage and David could have easily killed him. David could have easily taken Saul's life, but David said something. I want you to notice what David said. Now, keep in mind, at this time, Saul was not even right with God. At this time, he had rebelled against God. But still, David said, I will not touch the anointed of God because I know that God had anointed him and I will not touch God's anointed. That happened twice. Once he, he cut his piece of his garment off and another time he took his, his spear and what was it, Sharon? Water bottle. Or, yeah, his water bottle. And then he kind of taunted him from the other side of the ravine. He said, hey, Abner or whatever that guy's name was. He said, Where, where's the king's spear and where's his water bottle? And they looked around and it was gone. Well, David had it. He could have easily taken Saul's life, but he said, I'm not touching God's anointed. I'm not. There's something powerful about the anointing of God. There's something special about the anointing of God. Hallelujah. And David did not want to come against it, so David would do him no harm. Solomon, 
also was anointed by uh, the priest and Nathan the prophet anointed to be king and they took that horn of oil and poured it upon Solomon's head and Another instance, God gave instructions to Elijah. He said, Elijah, this is right after God spoke to him in that still, small voice. Remember that? And then God said, okay, now, Elijah, when you go from here, there's three people that I want you to anoint. I want you to anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. I want you to anoint Jehu to be king over Israel. And I want you to anoint Elisha to be a prophet that's going to take your place. A prophet in thy room is the words that were used. Now I see where Moses also anointed. He anointed, the Bible says, and we can read about that in Exodus 40. He took the anointing oil and he anointed the tabernacle and he anointed all that was in it. He anointed the altar and he anointed the utensils and the vessels and the, the laver and the stand. And then he anointed Aaron, his brother, the high priest and Aaron's sons. He anointed them. And I didn't really read. I tried to find where it's, and I'm sure God did, but I couldn't find the place in scripture. And if you know where it's at, you can show me later. But I don't read where, I, I, I know that Moses came in contact with God many times and, and God spoke to him face to face as a man talks to his friend, but I don't read where God uh, had anybody anoint Moses, but I do know that he was anointed because how could he anoint Aaron if he didn't have the anointing? You can't give out something that you don't have. Amen? Amen? So he had the anointing. And he poured it upon Aaron. There was a, a thing that he did where they washed themselves with water and they put on the special garments. And then Moses anointed Aaron and, and his sons. Hallelujah. And I want to get to this point right here. God gave Moses a special recipe for making anointing oil. Did you know that? God, get, now most of the time nowadays we use olive oil and, and even in the recipe that God gave Moses, mostly it was olive oil. But he had some other ingredients that he had Moses put in it as well for, for the Old Covenant and the Old Testament. There was five ingredients that God told Moses to use in that anointing oil. As a matter of fact, let me read it to you quickly if I may. Exodus chapter 30. Verse 22 says, Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet calamus, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of olive oil and hin, H-I-N, meaning about a gallon and a half of olive oil. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, and it shall be a holy anointing oil made of five ingredients. The first one was myrrh. Myrrh is a bitter herb used in embalming. We also see that. Most of you know the story of the birth of Jesus. We also see that in the New Testament, what was given at the birth of Jesus. But used in embalming, and it represents dying to self. And it's, since it's a bitter herb, there's something that, that can happen in the life of a, an individual, of a Christian. Life comes against us and things can make us bitter. The Bible, the New Testament talks about being careful lest a root of bitterness spring up. So when problems in your life arise, one of two things can happen. You can let that root of bitterness spring up or you can take it to God, die to self and say, Lord, Take care of this for me. Handle it for me and not let the root of bitterness spring up within you. Hallelujah. And when you die to yourself, it brings the anointing. Now, these five ingredients, they symbolize what the anointing is. They also symbolize what the anointing, what, what brings the anointing. 
The second ingredient was sweet cinnamon. I didn't realize this until I started studying, but cinnamon added to anything enhances the characteristics of other things, other herbs. It enhances, it brings it out better. When the anointing comes, it enhances the natural and it brings the supernatural. When the anointing comes, it takes something insignificant and turns it into something powerful. When the anointing of God comes, and that's what's, what was symbolic of the cinnamon used in the anointing oil. The third ingredient, I'm trying to move along quickly on this, but the third ingredient, ingredient was the sweet calamus, also known as cane because it was a like a reed or a cane you know what a cane is a, a bamboo cane or a sugar cane something happened at my house yesterday that I had, it, I learned something new you folks might already know this Martha can testify to this all of a sudden we heard it sounded like Wyatt Earp and all of his cowboy buddies was in the yard next door shooting what it sounded like. Pow, 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 pow. I thought, is that fireworks or have they gone crazy trying to target practice over there? I didn't know what it was, didn't it? And I, I saw Martha go out on the porch and, and rubberneck to see what was going on over there. <laughs> I mean, it was pow, 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 and it went on and on and on. I thought, goodness, high as bullets are, surely they're going to run out of ammo pretty quick, but it just kept on. And I found out when my neighbor texted me, he said, if you think those are gunshots, they are not. LOL in his text, laugh out loud. He said, my brother-in-law brought a whole bunch of, of uh, bamboo over here. And he said, I built a fire and I'm burning it. And he said, apparently when you burn bamboo, it explodes because it's got pockets in it and there's moisture inside of it and I am a witness that bamboo does indeed explode if you've never heard it I mean the fireworks ain't got nothing on 4th of July if you want to have a good 4th of July go find you some bamboo and burn it and that's what was happening so back to my what I was saying cane now, now you know what I'm talking about cane bamboo well that's what this uh, sweet calamus was and it has a twofold symbolism it is a rod, which is a symbol of authority. Have you ever noticed when the anointing comes, it brings authority? I mean, I've been under the anointing of God before, and it doesn't matter if, they, if every devil in hell came in the door. I feel like that the power of God is on me, and I can defeat them because the anointing of God is on me. It's that authority. It's the authority to tell the devil to get out. It's the, the authority to tell sickness, you've got to go. It's that authority, amen, that will bind up the brokenhearted. It's that authority that will set deliverance to the captives. That's the authority that the anointing brings. Amen. That's what this was symbolic of this cane, this calamus. But also there's something else about this calamus. As it grows alongside the rivers, the head of it is full of oil. And the way that they know when it's just about ready to harvest, there's so much oil in it that it begins to bend over. And it'll just about bow all the way down to the ground. And when it does, they say, oh, it's ready now. It's now it's ready because it's bowed over. As a, that's a sign of humility. Hallelujah. And I believe you can have the authority, but also, praise God, there is a humility that must be present. And the humility, when you're humbled yourself in the sight of the Lord, he will lift you up. You can't lift yourself up. The Lord has to lift you up because when you try to lift yourself, yourself up you go wrong every time but when you humble yourself before God and let him do the lifting hallelujah that's when it'll work praise God you got to have humility to have the anointing two more ingredients and I'm moving along quick here cassia apparently maybe that's where our word castor oil came from because that's kind of what cassia was a type of something similar to castor oil used for inner cleansing. Has anybody ever took castor oil? Did it give you an inner cleansing? <laughs> Hallelujah. 
This cassia was put in this anointing oil. When we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, that makes us empty and clean and pure and ready to be filled up with the anointing oil from heaven. Say amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Lastly was the olive oil. The main ingredient for this anointing oil was olive oil. You can't have olive oil until you crush the olives. You've got to crush the olives. I dare somebody to lift your hand and say, Lord, crush me if you must. Take, take my personality out of the equation. Lord, let me decrease like John the Baptist said and let you increase in me. Hallelujah. And that brings out the anointing. That brings out the oil when we're crushed. Hallelujah. My, 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 my. Thank God the oil represented of the Holy Ghost. Let me summarize by saying this. David said in the book of Psalms, chapter 92 and verse 10, David, King David said, I shall be anointed with fresh oil. I shall be anointed with fresh oil fresh oil. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you this morning, some of us have tried to hold on to yesterday's oil. We tried to hold on to some somebody else's oil. We tried to get that that worked for somebody else. But David said, God, I want that fresh oil. I need that fresh oil. Hallelujah. That comes down from heaven. You know, God has an oil that's fresh. God has an oil for you. God has an oil and an anointing that's for 2023. Hallelujah. They had an anointing back in the 50s and it worked in the 50s. They had one in the 60s and it was good in the 60s. And all back then, God moved in a mighty way. But I'm here to tell you now, God has an anointing for 2023. And I say, God, pour out that spirit, pour out that anointing. Hallelujah. And I believe as the time comes closer and closer to his returning, more and more oil is going to be poured out because he said in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. I dare somebody to lift your hand and say, pour it on me, Holy Ghost. Pour it on me, God. Hallelujah. God has a fresh oil for today. One more thing about the oil. I know we use it, this expression a lot, but do we really know what it means? The anointing breaks the yoke. Do you know what that means? The anointing Breaks the yoke. Do you know what a yoke is? It's a bondage. When you yoke two oxen together, they got a big thing around their neck and they're in bondage. The devil would like to keep you in bondage. He'd like to put a yoke around your neck and keep you bound and keep you from praising God and keep you where he would like to have you defeated and depressed and cast down. But the, I'm here to tell you this morning that that devil's yoke has to be broken. Hallelujah. And it's that anointing, the Bible says, that will destroy. It won't just break the yoke. It will destroy the yoke and bondage of the devil. Yes. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Let me read it straight out of God's word. Isaiah 10 and 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed. Listen to the next words. Because of the anointing. Oh, hallelujah. That's enough to make me shout. Hallelujah. It will be destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah. of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord tells us to anoint. James 5, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil. In the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. We're, we've done a lot of anointing in the natural. But I say, God, do it in the spiritual. Matter of fact, stand to your feet right now and lift your hands toward heaven and say, Lord, put that anointing on me. Hallelujah, put your spirit on me, Jesus. Hallelujah, let the oil be poured out, God, in a mighty way.